kilometer north of the Damascus Gate in the old city of Jerusalem, amidst modern mega hotels, roads, and the bustle of the city, is a quarry-like yet sophisticated pit, which is the Tomb of the Kings. Totally unexpected and surrounded by walls, it is presently under the control of the French government. One needs to buy tickets online to visit, and it does not disappoint. Josephus records that the tomb once belonged to a prominent and pious convert to Judaism, to a foreign queen, Helena of Adiabene. It seems likely that she had a stake in the site eventually. But more recently, however, Jean-Baptiste Humbert of the prestigious École Biblique in Jerusalem proposes that the complex was intended for an illustrious royal no other than Herod Agrippa of Acts chapter 12 fame. The monumental staircase leads down to a pair of mikveot hewn out of the rock. Then one passes through a gate into a vast sunken courtyard. The entire tomb is meticulously aligned with the Jewish temple. On the west side is an enormous lintel originally upheld with two pillars. A rare rolling stone tomb lies just beneath. It protects a maze of 40 to 50 burial niches fanning out from several rooms. Josephus relates, while Herod Agrippa presided over a spectacle at the theater of Caesarea Maritima, he robed himself in a garment holy of silver. Radiant in the beaming sun, the people paid homage to him as a god. The grandson of Herod the Great, Herod Agrippa, is described in Acts chapter 12. Not only did he put the disciple James, the son of Zebedee, to death, but he arrested the apostle Peter. Because he did not give glory to the God of Israel, the angels smote him with worms. Josephus also describes his regret and painful demise five days later in his promontory palace. Because of this untimely death in 44 CE, the work on the monumental tomb appears to be incomplete. Exterior details were unfinished, the blocks of the cisterns were not detached, and the interior of the tomb is bare. It looks like the work was abandoned. It's possible that under these circumstances, the new convert Helena, Queen of Adiabene, claimed the site for her own use shortly thereafter. While she herself did not die in Jerusalem, it appears that her descendants utilized the site. The original French excavator de Solzy extracted five sarcophagi in the 19th century, and the story of these artifacts is a fascinating treasure hunt in itself. Sarcophagi 1 and 2 are displayed at the Louvre Museum in Paris. On this one is inscribed the name of a possible descendant of Helena. Ironically, Sarcophagi 3 and 4 are on the Temple Mount. Who would have thought that the third is covered in rosettes and sits in a benign fashion in front of the Islamic Museum? The fourth is at the Islamic Kite Bay Fountain as the faithful enter the Temple Mount for purification. Used as a stepping stone to the fountain, the visitor washes standing on a sarcophagus. As for the fifth, thousands daily transverse across the old city by Sebil Tariq El Wad, the fountain on the street after its namesake every day without realizing it. I was surprised, though, that the local merchants were well aware of the origins of this trough under the fountain. In summary, with scholars still uncommitted and the research still ongoing, the Tomb of the Kings is the most magnificent tomb in all of Jerusalem. Its grandeur reminds of the scope of Herod the Great's building projects. So why would his grandson, the last Judean king, be any different?